Hello everybody, my name is Anthony Seabud, and today I'm going to give you a quick tutorial on my latest open source project, S4. What is S4? S4 is 100% compatible S3 storage, accessed through Tor, and distributed using IPFS. The project is 100% free to use, and is currently published on GitHub. Architecture. Data is ingressed into an S4 server using Tor. This is to protect the anonymity of both the user or the application, and also to protect the physical location of the S4 server itself. But Tor isn't just used for anonymity. Tor also acts as our DNS. Each S4 server has its own on onion address. This means we can create a free domain without the need to register in with, any with any third parties. A sidecar container is provided to seamlessly proxy any existing S3 code over Tor into S4. Now, some of you must be wondering, Tor is typically quite slow. Is this really the best way to write data to our object storage? And the answer is absolutely yes. In practice, typically, this kind of object storage is written to once and then read many times by our users. Because of this, it's, actually, it's not a particularly bad trade-off for the benefits we get to write our data at slightly slower speed using Tor, and then to read it using IPFS. Now, on the other, on, on, the, on the actual application itself, each of your each of your buckets will have a corresponding key in IPFS. Every time the bucket data is changed, that key will be used to publish that bucket using IPNS. This means that in production, you can address any content in your buckets using any public gateway, and then the key and then the address of where you've written that file in the bucket. So let's have a look at that sidecon container. So in production, your app would typically look something like this. You will import the official Amazon AWS SDK, instantiate the S3 class, but here you've specified the endpoint as the S4 client, which is the sidecon container as shown in this Docker compose file. Also in this doc compose file, we've set the S4 host address here. This is the onion address of our S4 server. When our node application uses the S3 class to put an object in our bucket, that request will be sent to the S4 client, the sidecar container. The client will change the host to this environment variable here, and then relay that request over Tor to our S4 container. This allows us to keep all of our existing S3 code, but write all that data to our S4 server. Now let's try a live demo. So let's get started by creating our first local S4 server. First, clone the repository using GitHub and then CD into the repository. Now we're in the repository, we need to create our onion address for the S4 server. We can do this by running the command docker run minus ti minus minus rm minus v dollar pwd forward slash data forward slash tor and that's going to be mapped into the web directory and we're going to use the container idea s4 tor proxy and the command that we're going to use to generate that onion address is generate and we're going to provide it with s4. Great, and as you can see, it's generated us with a brand new onion address. Next, we just have to run the command docker compose up. And now our S4 server is started. Now, let's see if we can navigate to that onion address using Tor Browser. Good. As you can see, it's beginning to load the Minio login screen. And let's attempt to log in.
Great. So now we've logged into the Minio file browser. Let's see if we can create a bucket. S4 cache. Great. So we've created our first bucket. Let's see if we can upload a file into that bucket. That looks good. Let's see if we can view the file. Brilliant. So what have we done here? We've created our first bucket over Tor, and we've now uploaded our first file using Tor as well. But in production, it's your applications that are going to be writing data to your buckets. So how will we how will we achieve that? In the root of the S4 repository is a directory called example. This is a Node.js example showing the official Amazon AWS SDK working with the S4 sidecar container. As you can see in the Docker Compose file, we have my app, which is just our node application, and we have the S4 client. As you can see here, there is a S4 host environment variable, which we're loading in from the EMV file. This must point to the onion address that we just created. Now let's have a look at the index.js script. We start here by requiring the official Amazon AWS SDK, and then we instantiate the S3 class. Note here that our endpoint isn't pointing to our onion address, it's pointing to our local S4 sidecar container. Then we create a variable called bucket, and then we try and create a bucket with that bucket name. If successful, we then try and put a example.pdf into that bucket. Now, let's try running this script from inside the MyApp container. To start our example application, we can run the command docker compose up minus d. And as you can see, it successfully created the S4 client and the myapp container. Now let's run the index.js file from within the myapp container. docker exec minus ti myapp node src index.js As you can see, we've successfully created our bucket and we've successfully uploaded example.pdf into the new bucket that we've just created. Now let's have a look at that in Tor browser. Now, if we refresh Tor browser, hopefully we'll be able to find our new bucket on our S4 server. Great. And as you can see here, we have our new bucket and we have example.pdf inside that bucket. So now we've proven that we can upload, we can upload content into our S4 server using the official Amazon AWS SDK. How do we read data from our S4 server? As you can see in the sidebar, there is a third bucket called system. This bucket is automatically created for you and is not published to IPFS. Inside the system bucket, you will find one directory for each of your buckets. If we open the S4 test bucket, you'll find there is a hash here. Let's find out what happens if we navigate to that hash. Now it took a second, but as you can see, we now, th this hash is displaying all of the contents of that bucket. And if we try and open the flag, brilliant. As you can see from this URL bar, we've been able to address the content stored in our bucket using a, any using any IPFS public gateway. Now let's try and actually rendering this in an HTML page. Now let's see if we can address that image using a standard HTML file. In our example directory, let's create a new directory, a new file called example.html and HTML for the file. And let's create an image tag with the source as our flag. Let's save that. And now let's open that HTML file. Now it's loading the image. Boom. Now as you can see, we've just created a plain HTML file and we've been able to load our image from our S4 bucket using a 
plain HTML with no, no additional JavaScript or any other um, configuration. Thank you everyone, that's all for today. If you'd like more information about the project S4, you can go to my website, which is idea.io forward slash S4. Or if you would like to make a PR to the project, you can visit this project on GitHub at github.com forward slash idea inc forward slash S4. Thank you for your time.